today I wanted to show you my sketchbooks as uh, they were full and I wanted to go through and declutter them. As you can see, I don't keep a traditional sketchbook, you know, like the bound notebook type. My sketchbooks are lever arch folders, just, you know, one of these that you use to keep your schoolwork in. And this allows me to maintain like a reference section that is accessible and useful to me and also be able to remove materials that are old and I'm done with without you know having to tear pages out so I really like the fact that these folders allow me to reorganize all my notes really easily so that's why I don't keep a traditional sketchbook and instead keeping it in these now I have two they are absolutely massive so I am going to make this sketchbook flip through into two parts. First one, this one, we're going to go through this one. And then in the next video, we'll go through this one. So this is my first sketchbook flip through that we're going to go through. And this is mostly color theory, just learning about colors, um, doing various courses. I think it's mostly two, three courses in here and also just getting to know my watercolor colors because I only really got into doing watercolors full-time about October 2017 so like these notes are like from November last year and the first few are just color swatches and also about comparing colors across different brands so here because Holbein for me is cheaper to get hold of uh, than Windsor or any basically any other professional brand I took colors that I really like such as the Windsor Lemon Yellow and tried to compare um, which colors could replace uh, a Windsor Lemon from the Holbein range and then these are just color swatches of colors as I got them, some neutral colors, and then a sample dot sheet that I got from Schminke with some supplies I bought. And then here I'm just comparing color names and how different they are across brands. So this, these two are both permanent orange, one's from Rembrandt, one's from Daniel Smith, and some of the colors are quite similar they're passable as the same color but as you know even if it has the same name color and the same pigment depending on the processes they go through each brand has very different colors so I was just experimenting on which colors you can kind of re like reliably switch out and which ones you are just so different and like these and these are just so different that I would never recommend you swap them out where well, they're not interchangeable and then I was seeing how the difference in color in different brands of the same color name affects how well it neutralizes its um, complement colors and this is the same And then these were just me swatching the colors I wanted to put into a palette I put together for a color theory course that was taught by Stephen Quiller online. And I'll leave a link to that course. Um, and because I didn't have access to the exact colors he had, I had to put together my own range of colors. And I also tried to put together my own range of colors rather than like the exact colors that the teacher recommends because the cheapest paint, the best value paint you can get hold of are the paints you already have. So I have lots of Holbein, so I was trying to replace all the colors with that and figuring out in which order these should go in my palette. And these are notes from the color theory course. And I will go through them quite quickly because this is obviously a taught course by somebody else. And so these are just mixing two colors, two complementary colors and seeing how they affect each other. And 
and the thing I tend to do is when they say do this particular exercise I tend to do it for like all the possible combinations as far as I can physically manage them so with like these charts there were 12 colors that we were focused on so I did all six pairs rather than just like the first couple and I find that that's how you get the most value out of any art courses is if you put the time in to do more work than they even suggested because I find that with watercolors it's, it's kind of similar to when I was teaching programming in that you can learn things in theory in your head by watching videos and reading but it doesn't really go into you like into your body until you start doing them physically yourself and so like I've watched through other people's color theory courses and one of the reasons why Stephen Quiller's course really stuck with me and I learned a lot from is because I put the time in to do all the exercises he suggested and more and so I believe that that's what makes a difference in how much you're gonna get out of an art course is how much time are you gonna put in to do the exercises and do more than what they say you should do. The other advice I have in picking a good colour theory course, because there are so many out there, like because there are so many, it's actually quite hard to choose. It's, it's really hard to know which is the good one and which one is the good one for you. And my tip for picking a good colour theory course for you is pick an art teacher that is doing it in the medium you're working in but also in the style you really like because when you like a art teacher's style you can really start to learn how the color theory links to their style and how you can bring it into your own whereas if you don't like their art style you feel quite disconnected with what the color theory they're teaching you the problem with colour theory is that we say like, oh, a colour theory class and we think it's just like one thing, but it's not colour theory, it's like multifaceted and there's so many things you can talk about in colour theory and you can't cover all of them in a course, that's like a lifetime of studying. And so what happens is each teacher will learn their bit that they needed for their style and then they will teach you that like segment of color theory and so you could take like someone's color theory course and find that it just doesn't connect with you because it's, te it's teaching a completely different facet of color theory that is like not relevant to what you're trying to do. So I'm really glad I took Stephen Quiller's course because I really like the way he used watercolour and just colour in watercolour. Um, you know, his work is very loose and in, uh, but with intensity in colour and so his course was all about how to make those colours sing and be really bright. And also a lot about mixing uh, colours within the colour wheel which was really fun for me. So I highly recommend just picking art teachers by the art style they like. This might seem obvious now that I've said it, but it took me a really long time to figure that out for myself because I would just take the popular courses, you know, that everyone was taking and go, oh, like, why is this not sinking in for me? And what I'm learning more and more as I get into creating my own art is it's so important to forget what everyone else is telling you you should be doing and just follow what you like because again art is like a huge thing it's literally dealing with infinite possibilities so if you keep doing what everyone else is telling you you should be doing a you're gonna get bored because you're not interested in it but b you get lost in style and you know Finding your style is like such a big talk and a big mission in art and within the artist community and I find that the biggest journey isn't in finding your style because you, you, your body, your art knows your style. The biggest hurdle in getting to your style is in letting go and saying no to things that 
people say you should be doing and what you say to yourself you should be learning and trying out and just following what comes easy for you and what's really interesting for you and what lights you up it's surprising Doing that though is really surprisingly hard to begin with. It's an emotional journey you have to go through in honoring yourself and what you love and who you are, which is quite hard coming from a you know, culture of that being taught that that's selfish in some way, which is like absolutely ridiculous. But that's what we get brought up, you know, believing in. So for me, certainly, that was the hardest thing. That was way harder than any studying of any facet of art, is letting go of the shoulds. But then the joyful bit comes when you actually get to pick what you like and just fo start following everything that is about what you like and what's easy for you, and then your art and your style will just like be like oh yeah i've been here all along i've just been waiting for you to like get around to me and also then i feel like once you get to that stage you stop chasing trying to find your style because you're just so involved in the creating of art in in spending time exploring what you like and what you're passionate about and then you don't really care about whether your art has style or not anymore. So my advice in finding style and in, in finding the right courses to take and stuff is just follow what you like. If you like that person's art and they happen to be ha teaching something that you're interested in, take that course. Ignore everything else. You don't need to know everything in order to make beautiful art that means something to you and for the viewers to connect to your art and this is still the same course you can see it's a long long course I think it's about off the top of my head I think it's like 11 I want to say 11 or 12 part courses and each one's about 40 minutes to an hour so it's a really big course I took about a month to get through the whole thing but I think it was completely worth it that's the end of Stephen Collins course and this was just me mucking around in um, just seeing how colors mixed with other colors it was really like the first time I was being as thorough in my testing so I would take every color that I could think of or that I had on my palette and mix it and see so that I actually had a proper like chart and a record that is thorough and I like thoroughness um, it's the scientist part in me that goes uh, if there's uh, something to test then let's test it with like all the combinations that I'm gonna be using so I would use like try an effect on so this was like blooming and it was on cad yellow light and I took every color in the palette and I tested all of it and then I would take the next color which was Naples yellow and did exactly the same thing and then I think I got bored and didn't do more because it is tedious but oh no I did titanium white for some reason now this um, onwards is Nita Leland's color theory course and as I said before you know color theory has so many different facets and Stephen Quillers was about make you know combining colors to make them sing and like a thorough theoretical background into color theory and around the color wheel and stuff was I say Nita Leland is about getting to know your paints more and their um, individual characteristics and understanding things like staining and lefting and all that kind of stuff and so I was really glad that I took both courses because they teach you completely different things so this is like more about understanding you know taking any paint and understanding their characteristics rather than talking about color wheel theory Type. She talks about that too, but is more focused on un getting to know your paint collection more in a systematic way. So these are like high intensity colors and you make all the colors 
she says to like make these kind of charts for oh, every color you have um currently i just chart swatched all my colors except the snail ears and has 170 colors so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> but um i think i swatched the ones that she had on her book so that was fun to do it was a lot of experimenting which i like And so it was just a lot of swatching colours Which actually I have to say is way more fun Because <laughs> you're like, ooh, pretty colours all the time And um, and then you're not afraid to go into your colour collection anymore You're like, oh yeah, this, you know, I need this and this characteristics Oh, it's got to be these colours I love this page because like the, it, they're really inky colours and it's quite strange that I really get drawn to these colours because if you see my art, these muted deep tones don't really come in certainly yet into my art. I'm really, you know, I, I use a lot of in bright intense colours, but maybe because I'm feeling drawn to it, then this is something I should look more into and and explore so that I can bring it into my art because you know as I said before follow what you love follow what you like follow what's interesting to you and lights you up and what's easy to you so yeah maybe this this might be the next project and that's it for this folder sketchbook thing I hope you enjoyed my first sketchbook flip through I know it's not a very traditional flip through but I thought it'd be interesting to put a video out there of a non-traditional way of keeping a sketchbook because there's so many different possibilities and I'm hoping that you know it might be useful for someone out there who's looking for a alternative to a bound sketchbook that is full of sketches and pencil drawings and beautiful drawings sketchbooks don't have to be bound they don't have to be full of beautiful you know drawings and paintings as i say thank you so much for watching this video please like share comment subscribe hit the subscribe bell notification bell button and uh, i will see you in the next video